Welcome to the If the Walls Could Talk in Buffalo podcast. My name is Don Purdy, former director of football administration for the Bills, 27 years. And I'm Josh Cormier, a member of the coaching staff under Wade Phillips. All right. So, Josh, we're in the middle of the season, but let's let's take it back a little bit. Uh, coming into uh, the season or after, after a season, uh, the team had been a repeat AFC East champs. They had they were playing an old divisional game. They had been in the AFC Championship game on the road the year before. Yep. Okay. They had a guru of an offensive coordinator that was in high demand around the league. They had a fourth-year quarterback who was at the top of the game and getting better. Uh, they had lost their leader in the secondary. Um, You're talking about the 1989 Buffalo Bills, right? I am. I can't get anything past you. You are. Going yeah. into the 1990 season. Yeah. The reason uh, the reason that we're doing this podcast is because uh, yes. the eerie similarities between the, the 1990 Bills and the 2022 Bills. It is a one-second difference. Think about it. Yeah. In Cleveland, uh, on the famous Ronnie Harmon play, mm -hmm. uh, there was 14 seconds left on the clock. They That's were right. down They were down by uh, four points. And they had like, basically two shots to win the game. And that's obviously right. last year, we all know the 13 seconds that's right. in Kansas City. So that's the reason that we started to do this podcast. And we're really excited to share uh, stories and, and, and memories from your experience back then. You were, mm -hmm. you were in a member of, of the team even back way back then. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we've had on you know a number of from the 1990 team already in our 16 audio only podcasts. And we're excited that we're going to be able to share you know a number more as this goes on. Yeah, the growth has been amazing. I mean, it, it started off with a, an organic idea you had uh, after we had uh, reconnected uh, after some time, and we started talking about it. And to, to think we've gotten to this point is is amazing. The guests that we've had, yeah, we've had on Pete Metzlars, yep. we've had on John Davis, we've had on Chris Hale, we've had on uh, legendary trainer Bud Carpenter, yeah, uh, Scott Birchtold, who was VP of Media Relations, uh, Mike we had Mike Lodish, we had on Henry Kuntu, who has been was yep. the longest serving video director. We're going to have Glenn Parker on Monday, which we we're are. really excited about. And then, yeah. you know, a number of guests from the 1990 team going yep. forward. Every Everyone we've had on had some connection to the 1990 season. Vic Carucci yep. got his early start. He was on with us. He was excellent. Uh, Scott Birch told that was actually his first year with the Bills, the, the VP of Media Relations. And uh, the 1990 season's a fun season. It was. It, it was. Yep. It was the first time that the Bills were like the consensus national favorite, yep. which obviously is another parallel this year. They were favored in every game after week two. Really? They lost yep. in Miami. In 1990, Early in week two in Miami, right? in Miami, right? Then they reeled off, I think, 11 in a row yeah. before they lost one more regular season game in Houston, and then you know the the, the last regular season game, and then obviously everybody knows about about the playoffs here. So that's the kind of the genesis of this podcast. That's right. The other thing you know that makes us a little bit unique, and we're excited to share is we have over 30 years of combined experience at One Bills Drive. I think old man. Yeah, well, Jeez. yeah, yeah, you know how. So. <laughs> 2022 team they're going to city this weekend to play yep. the jets mm -hmm. and i thought maybe it'd be fun for you to share you know a charitable memory or kind of the logistics mm -hmm. as to what it looks like for the team to fly out of buffalo to any road game but specifically this week at, you know at new york yeah a short flight which is nice uh it's less than an hour of course it's a charter flight my responsibilities were to make sure that everyone was on the flight we give them their per diem uh which they always like um you get there and when you were with the staff, the team used to stay at the Sheridan Meadowland that in was, New Jersey. That was a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold back, man. Yeah, what do you really think about that? That was a shithole. <laughs> so, I was really disappointed. You know, I, I have a, I'm envisioning you know, flying on the charter, going to New York City for the first time I'm on the road. You yeah, know, I had Big Apple. Here we yeah, go, it's right? like, this is going to be great. I'm a night out in town. I got my $45 per diem and I'm, I'm ready to roll. We, the bus pulls up. I'm like, oh my God. Like yeah. we're, It was like a swamp. It was literally like the swamp of the Meadowlands. Yeah, there was nothing around it. So when I was traveling from 2005 and on, not because of me, but uh, staying in Jersey City, which was right across the river, um, it could have been you were staying, you were in Amherst. I mean, yeah. it wasn't, distinctively you are except if you looked a certain way there was a new york yeah. skyline actually the hotel that we stayed at was right across from the world trade center okay what did they do with the uh what did they do with the equipment on a, on a short flight like the, that well because it's a less than a two-hour flight the equipment is sent on uh the truck okay so at less than a two-hour flight the equipment sent on the truck is nice because you don't have to wait when you're taking off to come home for all the equipment to be loaded back on the plane that's about, already there about how many people are on uh the charter plane 
Um, it would be around uh, between 115, 130, depending okay, on. Okay, and it's a smaller plane when you're going less than two hours, right? Because you don't have that's the equipment. That's right. That's right. We we had a. Uh, uh, well, I, I remember the configuration of the plane because I also did the seating chart. Okay. Which, Political components oh, yeah. to that. Yep, yep. I had a consult. I had an uh, unfavorable uh, seatmate with me. Uh, for oh, a few well, I, I, won't, hey. I won't mention his name. Okay, but it is better than you sitting in the middle of an equipment truck when you're that is very uh, fair. on that's, the other that's, league. That's a story. That's a story for <laughs> my arena just, league my Buffalo there? Destroyers days, okay, which, yeah. which was a, quite a step down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so larger plane. Larger plane. So it was a three aisle three. I'll say it was that a seven forty seven. I know that the biggest. Flight was a 767, which was a two aisle three aisle two. Okay, so if you're going out to Seattle or to LA, anything beyond like Kansas City. Okay, because then the truck, yeah, then the, then tr the exactly. truck, there would be no right, truck, so right, you have right. to haul all the equipment as well. So yeah. let's say they land. Yeah. They land. Uh, police escort on four, oh, yeah. four buses, five buses. Uh, five buses, one bus with the trainers and equipment guys go straight to the stadium right and they set up all their equipment right there yep. okay everyone else players coaches goes right to the hotel where an advanced guy that uh from the staff a full-time staff member usually from media relations would have gone to that city like tuesday of that week kind of like Wednesday the secret the service going to exactly to, before before the president goes somewhere they're okay. there alone or at least they're the only person from the team there um we're in constant contact making sure you know we send them the, the obviously who's coming because they work with a hotel to have keys ready that are on the table in alphabetical order when the team flies in and you'll recall uh it looks like a wedding reception you get your <laughs> keys you know, you yeah. in, in, table and yeah so yeah everything's really organized yeah the fans know where the where the team stays sometimes, so there's gonna be sometimes. a group an interesting group of folks that usually greets the team at the hotel well some hotels you go into like a back alley you go through a kitchen and a, and a uh, an elevator and like, what is this? But then they don't have what they feel is sufficient security for them coming in a lobby or the side door. If you lobby, it's like that. Everything's roped off. Um, it's not like a flesh felt, flesh melting force field or something. Yeah, yeah. People go over, you know, they know enough to go over the ropes, but it's funny because players all go to their rooms. Uh, we do too as a staff. They kind of get changed before dinner. Uh, come back and it's all gone. So anyone that's there, it's right? Still you wouldn't even know if you, right. if you didn't exactly. know, you wouldn't know. So then, you know, obviously there's like specific for New York City. Do you have a memory of of traveling to New York or to MetLife Stadium? Oh yeah, uh, MetLife Stadium is interesting. the The new stadium is beautiful, but right behind the Bills bench, there are seats that are, are real close. Okay, like people that I'm sure they pay a ton for them. Sure. But uh, they feel that for their money that that they have earned the right to call it harassment or whatever. Talk. Like, talk. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's like, Whoa. all right. And you just have to kind of ignore them. That leads into a story in, in one of our earlier oh. episodes with Henry Kuntu yeah. and, and uh, being up in the video booth uh, at the old Shea Stadium, two stadiums yeah. ago in New York City, and how he needed basically to flash his security guy flash a handgun at the fact that the guys were, were chirping and, and blocking the screen and well, blocking the camera. And exactly. He's positioned at part of the stadium to film and play. And this fan apparently knew that he, by standing up, could obstruct his view. And he was kept trying to ask him in security. And finally, the guy brazenly looked and Henry just flashed on that a security guard gave him. We'll have to... We'll I'd love for folks to hear that Henry's own words. We're going to do a bunch. For the interviews that we've done... Uh, we're going to go take like some best ofs clips. Uh, folks are going to love them. I know. Yeah, we're really excited to, to share all that with you. Don's been in every NFL stadium except for SoFi. Uh, I've been in about half of them. SoFi's so Oakland or uh, LA, LA or yep. Vegas? LA. Okay. Allegiant Stadium. Okay. Vegas. Okay. So I was in Oakland in 2016. Yeah, right. So new uh, Ram Stadium I've yep. been in. Right? So we're oh. really excited. You know, we have a bunch of travel stories. We have a ton of behind the scenes stuff from all our years in the yeah. locker room and, and, and all the rest. So we can't wait to, uh, to get started on, on the portion of this. And we're, we're going to see everybody uh, early next week. Here we go. Go Bills.